Welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland, the COVID-19 edition. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at uh, Myrick O'Connell. But as you know, if you've seen this show, this is not about elder law. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary, um, and whose goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And Steve, my co-host, Steve Mitchell, and I, and Steve just couldn't make it today, but my co-host, Steve Mitchell, and I, your wonderful, wonderful selectman, uh, have been doing a series around COVID-19 because if you're Frank and Mary, you've really been stuck at the house, you know, all the time and you couldn't get out. And now finally things are starting to loosen up, but society itself is loosening perhaps in ways that may be dangerous to you now because everybody's out and many people aren't wearing masks and it's nerve wracking. And some places are open and some aren't. And you're still being advised as a senior to be careful because as you realize, um, um, you're the most at risk. We are the most at risk. I turned 70 in January, so I'm with you. Um, and I know from the last uh, two months, well, actually, as of, about la as of last week, I had lost my 13th client to COVID-19 uh, over that period of time. Um, so I've seen it a lot. I know that seniors are just nervous about this. Uh, and, and experience a, long, a lot of anxiety in general, which is why I invited Michelle Grasso. Um, Michelle, um, who uh, lives in Westboro and whose uh, company is in Hudson, it's called Synergy Wellness. Um, uh, Michelle and the folks that work with her deal with a whole variety of issues mm -hmm. uh, for seniors as well as non-seniors. But a, a, one of the focuses of their practice is on wellness and also on meditation as it, result, as it relates to wellness and on stress reduction. And if there's one thing we've got a lot of in the senior community right now, it's stress. So Michelle, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So could you start off by just telling people a little bit about your background and mm -hmm. how you ended up doing what you're doing and setting up the, the, the firm that you now have and what that is. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we can talk a little bit about how, how your services have uh, and the things you do have changed over the last few months mm -hmm. and, and, and especially as, as they deal with the senior popul the senior folks that you see, mm -hmm. how you're dealing with them, how you're dealing with them in the future and how you might be able to help them deal with what is really a hard time. You know, a time, you know, it's already been really hard where they've probably known people who have died or almost died and they're scared and they know there's no vaccine yet and it's a scary time. So to start off, how did you get to be where you are? Oh, well, thank you. Um, well, it's, uh, it took a, a long journey, I guess, but I would just say I started off uh, working in child welfare for most of my career and um, was a student, aspiring student of yoga, meditation, different types of energy healing, and um, I'm a, a licensed mental health counselor. So it was always my wish to have a place and a space where people could come to receive this, um, you know, breadth of wellness services for their mind, body, and spirit, rather than having to go to this place for this and that place for that and so on. So my vision came to fruition and we opened in September of 2018. And certainly not 18 months into it did I anticipate we would be closing to a pandemic. <laughs> um, and it did require um, a great deal of very fast pivoting, which I think has really benefited all of our community, especially the senior community that we serve um, that, uh, in, in, in various ways. So um, the first uh, way is we really went virtual with everything and have been able to shift um, our yoga and adding some more chair yoga classes, which um, some seniors really enjoy doing and we'll be keeping that on the schedule. Um, so we have 20 different types of classes of yoga of different levels and meditation a week, um, which are all at this, t at this time through Zoom, just like this. And even when we are allowed to reopen in phase three, they're all going to continue to be offered virtually going forward. So there'll be a blend of um, all the in-class uh, classes with limited numbers of people will still be virtual for people to practice. And um, so I'm, I'm curious when you say that, will you be doing the classes live and then mm -hmm. also uh, like taping them virtually or mm -hmm. you'll, will you be doing them in two separate, in two different formats? 
Um, the, the class that will be happening live will also be filmed. It will be recorded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. That's, yes. that's great. And by the yeah. way, we'll, you know, we'll make sure in the, in the course of this that, that, you know, if you could, if you get your information to the wonderful yeah. folks at Ashland Cable, mm -hmm. folks have your, you know, your contact information, your phone number, your email, if people want to kind of talk sure. a little bit more about those, Absolutely. About all of those classes. We so could you that. talk, could you yeah. talk a little bit once again from, your experience over these months, mm -hmm. and, and you've got a variety, you know, you folks do you also do counseling and a bunch yeah. of other things. Mm -hmm. What folks have been experiencing, how those experiences have been changing, because it's been going now for two, you know, over two months, yeah. and what you're seeing now, if you could. Yeah, so uh, another very large part of our service array is our mental health counseling, and we have nine clinicians who are taking referrals now, and we have um, offered a 15 minute free consultation for individuals that are having a hard time. We see at least 60 plus people a week who have, um, you know, before this whole thing happened, um, you know, people had their own uh, issues that they came with and pretty much exclusively conversations have shifted even in everyone's sessions to dealing with um, the pandemic and the Im impact, whether that be isolation or fear, or anxiety, and really the message that I think we've tried to, um, many of our clinicians have been tried to be really consistent with is this notion of um, acknowledging that, you know, it's okay that we, we don't have control over this situation. And there's this notion of riding the wave together and, <clears throat> and trying not to, excuse me, <clears throat> sort of not to beat yourself up over over this because the reasons are, are real. As you mentioned, you know people who have been sick who have passed or um, seniors watching worried about their own health or the health of their loved ones and not being able to see their loved ones and hug their grandkids. And um, you know, with underlying health conditions, all of these issues just become magnified. So feeling anxiety is normal. This is the message that it's okay. And that, you know, some, in some cases too, it brings up past traumas that we've been through that have mirrored this lack of control over a situation. And, um, you know, between isolation and grief of, of sort of life as we knew it, we can't just run out and do what we want to do. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in this uncharted time. And so we just um, invite everyone to, to ride the wave and, and to know that um, they're not alone in this experience. That's a great concept, just kind of helping folks ride the wave, right? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and have you found yeah. that that anxiety has, has been diminishing more and more in recent weeks that things have started to open up or are people con continuing from the folks that you're seeing mm -hmm. continue to, to really worry about this? Well, it's interesting. In the first uh, three or four weeks, our phones were very quiet as far as new, um, new patients coming in, which surprised me because I personally was experiencing a lot of anxiety and was surprised that we weren't getting more calls and right. thought that I think people were sort of frozen in their fight or flight mode. And certainly in more uh, recent weeks, the past five or six weeks, people have been reaching out um, and our current clients, particularly individuals who struggle with substance abuse or who live alone are, you know, really feeling like this has been a long time. This is hard. Um, people who are grandparents who are raising their grandkids, in some cases, that's a big role to play. Um, we've been all called to play, play different and new roles in our, in our homes. And um, so, you know, again, just offering the support and meeting people where they're at, because everybody's coming with something, something different that they're experiencing or facing. So it's, I, I wouldn't say that it's um, decreased in uh, anxiety. I actually think now people are starting to uh, feel the cumulative effects of it and, yes. um, and reach out. Yes. Yeah, because I guess I've, I've found that with, with many of my clients, that you're, you know, you're speaking to folks now who, as you say, for, for weeks, they were just frozen, you know, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for all of us, you were just saying, how does this work? Because you couldn't, you had no sense of where this was going. And remember in those first days, mm. the sense, you know, people throwing out numbers, oh, a million people could die, two million people could die. And you're saying to yourself, oh my God. Um, right. And I think now, you know, there's this, this for my clients, because my clients are all, you know, I have my median client age is 74. So all of mm -hmm. my clients are, 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 some of them even older than me, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so they've all, they've all kind of settled in now more, but they're also seeing that for younger people, 
mm -hmm. will realize that chances are they're not going to get hit with this, right? Yeah. The Grim uh -huh. Reaper is not going to get them. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they're starting to kind of go back to normal and wanting to go back to their old reality, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and, and, and people are, are, are certainly going out a lot more, but also wearing masks less. I can, it's very clear mm -hmm. that that's really changed. And, and, but seniors are aware that they, they are the ones that are going to remain at risk, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so they're trying to confront how, the, how their world looks. You know, where, where are the places that they can't go because they're, right. they're, they're going to be too much at risk? So could you just kind of talk about from your perspective, uh, and especially in terms of the, the, you know, the work that you do around meditation and mindfulness, Mm -hmm. how, how people might be able to learn some tools in order to mm -hmm. deal with a lot of this, right? Sure. Um, both at, at, you know, at home while they're out. That would, I think that would mm -hmm. be really helpful. Because mm -hmm. yeah, um, I know for a lot of folks, mm -hmm. you know, I, I remember hearing about mindfulness and I was like, well, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really a Buddhist, you know? <laughs> and, but, but over time that, you know, those images have kind of changed, right? Yeah, and people sure. have become kind of more accepting of this, what is really in, in some ways a, a kind of prayer, you know, or, or a, 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 a really wonderful way of kind of centering themselves better. So could you talk mm -hmm. about that? Sure. And what, what, we'll, what I'd like to do is share some um, sort of uh, a specific breath technique, which we'll get to in a couple of moments, but first to just share some mindful living suggestions um, for the here that I think could could hopefully um, you know uh, be be a resource to them because my, mindfulness isn't sort of just about breathing or um, you know how we but examining the thoughts in our head it's really a sort of a way of living and um, and thinking about being in the moment so some of the ways to help us stay in the moment because I think once we're in the moment then we're not anxious about the future we're a little less anxious about the future. Um, but the importance, uh, a couple of concrete suggestions just to share, the importance of keeping really to a schedule and having some consistency with your routines, the time you wake up with the meal times, you know, making sure you're getting dressed every day and, um, you know, sticking to a schedule as best you can to what you had before we were all staying home, I think can be really helpful to, you know, maintaining some nice structure and um, presence to your day. Um, you know, that sort of starts off the day and gets you through the day. And then there's the nighttime, which can also be a time where our minds go into the, the what ifs. Um, it's such an important time of day to be mindful about what you're doing and what you're watching. And we do suggest to our clients to um, limit uh, or ideally not have TV or screen time about an hour or so before going to sleep. No and, news? Um, you would, don't you want to be no. watching a lot of the news right now? <laughs> it's tempting. It is it, tempting. You know. um, but, you know, a lot of people do like to watch TV at night. So, but just make it fun, you know, make it, um, you know, something that's a little bit more light and upbeat. I know I like to watch um, the, you know, the HGTV home improvement shows or something that's <laughs> kind of, you know, traveling to, uh, you know, finding your house in, I don't know, some warm place. Um, yeah. But those kinds of things. And, and additionally, at nighttime, during the night, people are waking up. Um, and so how do you manage that rather than sort of saying to yourself, oh, I'm just tossing and turning, and then your mind starts going. Again, getting up and doing something a little bit more mindful, such as you know, looking at some photo albums, knitting, reading, have a cup of tea, something to just bring yourself back into your body um, and, um, you know, out of your head is really. That's an interesting notion to actually not, well, the way of thinking about it, to even go to bed knowing that you've got these things that are available. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you know, I know I might, I'm, there's a good chance I'm going to wake up. So here are the things that mm -hmm. I could do, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that you can kind of autumn, so that you don't wake up in this trap and, you, and things just start spinning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I may have I've, said that incorrectly. I meant to say get out of your head and get back into your body, which is actually what I'd yeah. like to try to do here. Um, uh, the only other thing I would like to say too um, is around joy and the, the notion of creating joy and leaving space for that in your day. The, um, one thing we often suggest too is, you know, making a list of the things that you really like to do and um, enjoy doing every day before this whole thing. And if you can just pick one of those things each day to do, and it can be very simple, it can be reading, it can be taking a walk, it can be just feeling some sun on your face, listening 
to music, um, something that brings you joy. You know, um, nobody said we can't have, have fun during this time. So we, we really encourage people to make space for that in their day, even if it's, you know, half an hour or an hour, that'd be just enough. And I must say that's getting easier the, the warmer it's gotten. It has. One of, yes. the, one of the hardest things about this pandemic was like it was in April, right? Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. everybody hates anyway. And it was yeah. cloudy and it was rainy and it was yeah. terrible, you know? So now at least you can, you can get out of the house. Yes. And do a little gardening or just take a stroll, you know, just feeling the fresh air is really, it's so important for your health mentally and physically. <laughs> so right. critical. Um, so if it's okay, what I'd like to do is try, um, a breathing exercise that, um, is, uh, centuries old and really helps to, uh, slow down the nervous system. And it's something that you can access anytime, anywhere you are. And, um, this is just intended to, um, bring awareness to the breathing, to the breath. And, um, in doing so you will slow down your, um, your nervous system, so it will calm you. All right, so, um, so I'm gonna ask everyone to just get comfortable in your seat. And what we're going to do, this is called the uh, four count breath. We're going to uh, breathe in for a count of four, and we're gonna to try to hold that for a count of four, or as long as you can, if you can't hold for four counts, four seconds, that's okay. And then exhale for four. So it's gonna be this four, you know, series of four, uh, and I'm going to count it through with you. So, uh, and I'd like you to just think about how you're feeling now, and then we'll look at how we're feeling right afterwards. All right. All right. So I'm going to invite everyone to just close your eyes for a moment. Okay. And okay. We're going to take a deep breath in two, three, four, hold two, three, four, exhale two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, last one, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. So I invite you to open your eyes. You know, you it's strange feel? closing your eyes when you're the show host. I know. <laughs> but I did it. Yes, thank you. How That's does, pretty I hope, wonderful. I hope people feel that, you know, there was a little bit of an opportunity to slow down your breath and your mind um, just, for, just for a minute. And you can try that, you know, anytime and anywhere. It's just, um, we all can access the breath. It really does bring you back and helps to ground you into your body because our minds tend to be the places where we go, ah, you know, so it helps to yeah. just slow down. Yeah. And, and, and how does that relate to if someone were zooming into a class of yours? So mm -hmm. what, would, what would happen if people were saying to themselves, so am I going to zoom in? I'm just going to breathe for a couple of minutes? Uh, you know, yeah. Can you just kind of talk about that mm -hmm. just so people can get a sense of the experience of it? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, so we have a lot of new students who have joined us um, for yoga and meditation. And usually the way um, a class begins, a yoga class, for example, it starts off with just that, with sort of just laying or sitting in a restful state with your eyes closed and just doing a little um, breathing and body awareness that's guided by the teacher. So it's very gentle and it's intended to just kind of get us into, um, you know, get us into the room, literally. Um, and then, and then the teacher guides everyone through, uh, through the positions is demonstrating, for example, in yoga, what, what, what one what should be doing. We have beginner classes. As I mentioned, we have chair classes, we have very slow moving classes, and then we have more vigorous classes. Um, and um, the, the teacher is showing and guiding with words um, students and she can see people on the screen. And so if people have a question or anything, there's an opportunity to, to ask and to be answered. Um, for meditation, we have two meditation classes a week and those generally, um, you know, you're not moving per se, you're sitting in a comfortable place and the teacher is, um, 
the teachers are guiding you with their words. Um, they're both different styled classes, really. Um, uh, one is Tuesday evenings at seven and the other is currently Wednesdays at 3.30, which is gonna to shift to Friday morning in July. Um, and they're both very different styles and I encourage you to check it out um, because it's just a very calming and um, healing experience that we tend to have the same people come to the same classes. They kind of get into a, you know, get a connection to the teacher that even through, through video, you feel a, a real connection. And there's opportunities within that class to be part of a community because the other students, there's chances to talk before class and after and share experiences. So a community forms there. That's what Synergy is all about. And right. I worried about when we transitioned to virtual because um, it was so important for me to keep that sense of community and a connection. So, you know, we have a special for new students. It's 30 days of unlimited classes for $30, which is just a great way to try out different, you know, experiences for, for meditation and for yoga, um, which currently so, are virtual. Yeah. And so I just, I just wanted to tell folks, so I was never a real believer in this until about 10 years ago, right? Because I kept on saying to myself, yeah, I kept thinking about guys in saffron <laughs> robes in the sixties and no, hmm. but, but as a way to, to kind of, get focused on yourself, get focused, get, it's really wonderful. And I think it's, mm -hmm. it's something that I've often, I've really talked to a lot of folks who've got, who are going either, who have memory issues themselves, mm -hmm. who are dealing with someone who has a memory issue as a way of getting, the greatest thing you can do to help someone with a memory issue is to really be there in the present with them, as opposed to mm -hmm. trying to convince them to have a memory again, you know? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so it, it can be a wonderful gift for a lot of people to, to, to just really help them dealing with their own issues and dealing with, yeah. with, with their partners and stuff. So, well, and the mission of Synergy is really to strengthen and support people who are caregivers, who are personally caring for other people or professionally caregiving for others. So this time has really, you know, called us out to um, serve. And I'm just so grateful for that opportunity. Uh, I can say that especially early on when, um, you know, we were all home in the beginning of March and there was just so much to be worried about. Um, sometimes that one hour of classes that I took would be, would feel like the one hour that day that I was breathing properly. So if, even if you are breathing properly now, um, it, I have to say the residual benefits of taking meditation or taking a yoga class stay with you for hours, um, days sometimes, it really just helps to reset. In fact, the Wednesday afternoon class is called the Midweek Reset Meditation, and it's this opportunity to just, um, you know, just really <laughs> to stop what you're doing and kind of start a little bit afresh. So we invite, invite you to try it out and see if it's for you. I hope this has been helpful for people, and if there are questions, we will certainly share our information. Um, for you to access after the show and uh, to inquire. Like I said, things will be offered virtually continually, even when we do reopen for classes and for mental health services, whether it's for you or someone that you care about who is struggling, we do take um, uh, most major insurance plans and uh, invite you to reach out to us at 978-333-7426. Um, and we also have acupuncture services for individuals dealing with pain and uh, insomnia and inflammation, all sorts of different health issues. So our website is www.synergy-wellness-center.com. I thank you for having me. I'm sorry that we missed Arthur, but I appreciate being here. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed uh, Michelle Grasso's comments. Uh, maybe they were so good that I actually just evaporated while they were being made. Uh, but I came back just to, to, to close and say, I know this has been a very difficult time for a lot of you folks. Uh, I hope that you could benefit from this presentation regarding, you know, you're your finding some tools in order to keep calm. We're all going through this together. We'll, and, and Steve Mitchell and I will be with you um, to try to provide you with any information that we can regarding what is going on here in Ashland. On behalf of Steve and myself, uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed this program, and I hope we'll see you in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland, the COVID-19 edition. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.